All right, hey everyone, Rob Perlmark here with three moms and a dad. And let's just be honest about this from the get-go. This is different than how we normally do the show. Usually we run it through this whole control room where we have graphics and we have video and we have different things. Uh, today we have a mic. <laughs> this is said mic. Uh, but we want you to be able to see us and to hear us. And I think that this topic is so important, even though we don't have all the bells and whistles, we gotta get ahead of this thing. This is called hanging or handling the holidays. So we've, we've got uh, Tracy Humphrey here. So Tracy, introduce yourself, a little bit about yourself, then we've got Deetra, and then we've got Ashley as well to introduce, and then we'll get right into it. Okay, um, I'm a mom, I work here, ABC 10. I have one daughter, Julia, she is seven years old, and this is a great topic because I don't want to overspend, but I want her happy. <laughs> Hi, my name is Deetra, and I have six kids, and they range in age, so I've well, been yeah, let us know a lot. Yeah. So I'm ready to share. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ashley. I have four kids, two girls and two boys. Um, holidays are extremely tough sometimes with different age ranges and things that they're wanting. So this is a great topic to be going over. Okay. All right, and I was looking down because I'm sharing this on my page. So if you're on my Facebook page, you can find it there and we do this on YouTube and a bunch of other things. So handling the holidays with kids. Here's the first one that sort of, that sort of uh, came up the other day. The first thing that is starting to happen with the kids is the Christmas list. Sometimes it starts a month ago, right? Yeah. And you start to mentally take some notes because you want to be aware of what the kids want. But I want to hear from you. Uh, how do you handle the Christmas list? Because it, it starts adding up, the kids start really imagining that they're going to get all these things on this list and you don't want it to get out of hand, but you want them to get something. So what's your experience with the Christmas list and the kids? And Deetra, we'll start with you. So um, right currently the nine-year-old uh, takes the Target booklet and starts circling for <laughs> what she wants. And her birthday's in November, so she has this huge list of birthday slash Christmas. Oh and so what's interesting is that we have a large family and they start asking, so they will get her a lot of things as well. But there are some things now she's getting older, she wants more expensive items, mm -hmm. um, which is terrible because then that means that her gifts are gonna be less and less. Mm -hmm. But um, we just try and budget and be realistic with our budget and see and not get her everything. At least that's what we aim to do. It doesn't always work out that way though. But the budget, you have to stick to a budget. Okay, so um, I have a seven-year-old, so we're, we're still in the Santa phase, mm -hmm. so she knows nothing about a budget, um, but she has already <laughs> said to me, we were in the store, she wanted this really cute sweater, and I said, I don't know, Jules, that's a little bit out of mommy's price range. Don't worry, I'm just going to ask Santa for it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, right. I'm not going to run back up here and get this sweater that she wants. Um, but I actually do, I don't do more than three from um, our household. So three from Santa in my household, mm -hmm. and then the rest I divvy out to family and friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that way I'm well within my budget. Mm -hmm. She still ends up with tons of things. Mm -hmm. And I always, even with three gifts, I still feel like we went over. Mm -hmm. All right, Ashley. So I have four to buy four, right? Mm -hmm. um, and their ages are from 13 to two, so we have some. Santa believers, some non-Santa believers. So, but this non-Santa believers still get Santa presents. Mm -hmm. um, they do make lists. Some of them are really extreme. <laughs> <laughs> Give us an example. And yeah. so, my daughter, she's thirteen. Uh -huh. so she wants a new laptop, and she wants a like new PlayStation games. And she wants a big ticket skateboard, which mm -hmm. are over a hundred dollars. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, she mm -hmm. wants. Nice Jordan shoes uh -huh. and everything on there is hundred of plus. Right. Like, you know, maybe one of those. Right. Uh -huh. You know, but we haven't from the get go with the kids not fulfilled all their wishes. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just re it's unrealistic, right? Okay. So we just pick and choose. Like, okay, well, we can do this one. Mm -hmm. You know, also family and friends. Like, we give them a list, but I also teach them be very appreciative to whatever you get. Mm -hmm. You know. And we don't do the big ticket items from Santa. They're usually the smaller, like fun toys mm -hmm. from Santa. So 
you know, mom and dad do get the mm-hmm. big, t- you know, yeah. credit for the big ticket items. So, yeah. so I, I wanted to make a comment about the thing you said, you said about Santa. I didn't think about this. And someone said to me, they don't do the big ticket items from Santa because what if another kid, you don't want to feel like Santa is only giving big ticket items to certain kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if your kid says, oh, well, Santa got me a so-and-so, and another kid was like, oh, I got a book from Santa. Right. It almost right. seems like Santa is picking and choosing mm-hmm. whom he wants to give larger yeah. gifts. So I well, think that's a good idea. Tell me, go ahead. You can explain that, because some kids are naughty and some kids are nice. <laughs> right? yeah. So if you're not getting something good from Santa, obviously you've got some work to do. Well, I also think that like Santa and the elves make toys. Uh-huh. They don't make PS4s. Ah, oh, good point. <laughs> they don't make laptops. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know it is a little trickier when as kids are getting older to find like the Santa toys. Mm-hmm. But you know, and I know it'll get trickier as they mm-hmm. more of them enter into the teenage years. Mm-hmm. But I still want it to be fun. You know, maybe it's a board game. You know, that they yeah. like, or you know, just something that's not so extra. Yeah, elaborate or extravagant or you know, super pricey. Just because I feel like that might take away from the younger kids, mm-hmm. my boys, who are still believing in like the toys and this and mm-hmm. that. So I, you know, that's kind of how I do it. Okay. Okay. One more thing on this before we move on. I want to. There's two perspective uh, perspectives of disappointment, right? Because that's the other thing too. You want everyone to be happy yes. uh, for the holidays, but you don't. You don't want this to be this negative thing. So I remember once when I was a kid. I got a toy that I already had, and I just blurted it out. I said, Dad, I already have this. And he goes, just a second. And he pulled me into the back room, yeah. right, with that voice, you listen to me. Yeah. And I remember that to this day, because my dad's super fun and uh-huh. nice, right? So but he was just like, no, this is about being thankful for what you have. Mm-hmm. Somebody gave you that gift, so you don't want them to feel bad. And I just remember like, oh my gosh, this is about a group experience of having fun. It's not always about the yep. presents. Right. Yeah. Be thankful. And I just remember that because that was a moment when I crossed over from a kid to sort of being more aware of, of what it's about. I think I was probably like 11 or 12. Okay. And then from the other side, uh, we had to get out ahead of this one. My daughter wants a puppy. Oh. She wrote it out. She's starting to learn how to write now. So now she's writing it and the P's are backwards. And, it's just, it's like, and she put it and she mailed it to Santa and we're just sitting there like how do we get, how do we get ahead of this right because yeah, what do you do? and my wife just says I'm this is great and it's good to know this but Santa doesn't give live animals yeah. because it's not fair and the sled and all of this and blah 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 and it would be comfortable and I'm like it's a genius <laughs> so glad I married her so so really quickly because we have other things was there a moment of disappointment that you had to get ahead of or that you had to handle DJ? Oh, that's a good question. Um, um, no. <laughs> Sorry. Not really, <laughs> because every year my husband and I start out on a budget, and we do go over the budget. Mm-hmm. I'm not even gonna lie. My husband has the biggest heart, and he always says in the beginning of the year, "We're not doing this next year," <laughs> and then next year comes around, and he's like, "Babe, we got to do this." And then they end up with, mm-hmm. we end up spending way too much. So mm-hmm. no, we've never had it thus far. Okay. Oh wow. Okay, so um, I just no, I haven't done. <laughs> but I do, we do have a few comments, so I do want to uh, share with our Facebook watchers. You can always leave a comment. We will see them real time. And these are some of the comments we got that actually chimed in on what you were saying about expectations. Mm-hmm. So this one particular fan, Alexandra Lee. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Expectations. What's that? A present is something given, not requested. So you should teach that from your children. Ooh, that's good. The other person says, nothing is special. This is Terry Lewis. If kids get too much or everything they want, help them appreciate thoughtfulness, handmade gifts, and the pleasure of family. And doing stuff with family is the best. Mm-hmm. And then one from Tina Tedesco. Mm-hmm. She says, we're fairly direct. Mm-hmm. We tell the kids, if your list consists of iPhones and game consoles, you are going to be disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honesty is right. sometimes the best policy, like especially that. if they're older and they can understand mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, for Tina's point, by the way, too, that deserves a mic drop. We only have one mic and there's a glass <laughs> table. Know, so, yeah, we'll, we'll act it out. Now, I'm sorry, you were saying something. I was just saying, it's honesty is the best policy, especially if your kids are older and they can understand. I'm not going to get you everything on your list. You know, you don't, don't think that you Come Christmas Day, you're gonna have all these presents. You know, we will give you what, what we can, mm-hmm. you know, yes. and be appreciative. And if you're not, then you're not getting presents next year. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, of course. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say that I love what you just said, and it is very important to teach the children. It is very important to teach the children um, to be appreciative of what they have, because what ends up happening when you give them everything is that they get older and they're 20 years old, and they're asking you to pay half or go half on a Galaxy 10, and you're like. <laughs> You're 20. <laughs> you have a job, you know, but that is something that my son asked me recently is that if we can help him go mm -hmm. buy phone and half, and he has a perfectly good phone. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> it's just about, you know, Start teaching them about the appreciation. It's very important. Um, just a couple really quick on yes. here that I'm seeing. Debbie, kids shouldn't have expectations. They should be taught that it's a gift, something that someone, some, some, something someone gives you doesn't necessarily. Uh, need to be what one expects. Yeah, you. Yeah, so we are reading these comments too. We're trying to do a bunch of things all at the same time. Uh, I want to talk about traveling, okay? Yeah. Just because traveling always seems, yeah, exactly, right? We all did it. Yeah. Subconsciously, we just let out that, ugh. <laughs> because traveling with kids can, can be fun, yeah. can be First fun. <laughs> right, but it also can be a real challenge. And usually with the holiday travel, it's a little bit farther than we go, a little bit longer than we go. Maybe the weather's bad. So I want to hear from you. Uh, holiday travel with kids. Have you learned anything that really works for you that can help other people out that are watching right now? <coughs> uh, well, let's start with Ashley and we'll go together. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to save the best for last. I know you got, you're ready to go. Um. We don't typically travel during the holidays, to be completely honest. Um, we've done it one time. We went to Las Vegas. My family lives there. And we went for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. The way home, there was so much traffic. Mm -hmm. At the time, I had a two-year-old, 11-year-old, a nine-year-old. Mm -hmm. And it, it was like 16 hours or something on the way home. The train hit. We were stuck in the one-way like lane. and. We couldn't exit. It was kind of terrible. The two-year-old had a breakdown. Mm -hmm. We had to just let him fry it out, you mm -hmm. know? Everyone's kind of like pins and needles, so you're like, nope, not doing it. Okay. Maybe as the kids get older, mm -hmm. but right now, family can come to us. Yeah, exactly. When you have a bunch of kids, like yeah. family really should try and accommodate because it's very difficult to travel with kids. Yeah. Deidre? Watch me grow up, goes on. Yeah, Deidre. <laughs> I was just going to say um, that nowadays we're discussing is that um, you know, um, iPads, iPhones, things of that nature are very, 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 very helpful <laughs> in holding a child's attention when you're traveling. Uh -huh. um, I will say that there's definitely a difference between um, a child that gets disciplined and a child that doesn't. Mm -hmm. You can tell when you're traveling. Mm -hmm. So when I'm with my kids, they know better than to act out um, a certain way. I mean, obviously they're going to have a, a little bit of boredom and they might, you know, mm -hmm. say things to each other. However, for the most part, you can shoot them a look like, or don't make me stop this car type deal, <laughs> you know? So they know, they, they, they will know how to behave when you're traveling. Okay, cool. Okay, well, we just traveled for Thanksgiving. So we flew cross country to Alabama. Mm -hmm. And so here's what I do. Um, I have a Netflix account, I have an Amazon Prime yep. account. I download two or oh, yeah. three movies yes. Yes. per app to her particular iPad. Mm -hmm. And then I try and I, she gets to pick three new apps, things she's never played with before that I think will hold her attention. So here's the downside. The plane we were on did not have charging. So we ran out of battery mid-flight. Girl. Yes. You pack the battery pack. Well, I didn't have the battery pack. And I thought, you know, most planes have a place where you can charge your USB. So at that point, I said, why don't we take a nap? <laughs> so she did a little bit of a nap, and then, yeah. then we started playing at tic-tac-toe, which actually went on for about an hour. Mm -hmm. So that helped me out. Yeah. Right, and you don't need batteries for tic tac toe. No, you do no. not. Mm -hmm. um, a couple quick things: Patricia traveling this year, uh, Christmas to be with grandparents, and then one more there, Tracy. Um, uh, she says yes. Uh, downloading is key. That's Patricia O'Neill. <laughs> And oh, I also had another one that someone mm -hmm. said when our children were little. This is from Gloria mm -hmm. Wayne Vaughn. They got two gifts from us, and we also had them buy two gifts for toys for tots, Aww. so that they would learn yeah. to give gifts. Also, now they are adults and very generous. Nice. Um, a quick travel thing. One of the things that I've learned doing the weather is don't go during bad weather. Right? <laughs> so, so what what happened this year? You know, this thing, yeah, this thing. I mean, it was bad. 
And so every day, you know, I do like 15 weather hits every morning, and every time I'm saying it, and knowing that I have to go to Southern California, I'm getting depressed. So what we did was we got flexible. We let everybody ahead of time know, okay, we're gonna be coming in a little bit later than we thought. We're gonna be traveling at odd times. Leave the house unlocked because we're leaving at seven o'clock at night. We drove basically all night, and we had no traffic, and it turned into a date night with my wife because the kids fell asleep, the driving was easy, cruise control, we were listening to our favorite songs, like, yeah, we got to talk. And then they woke up about two hours before we got there at midnight, and then they wanted to talk, so it didn't work out exactly, but my, my key thing with doing weather and knowing that that tends to be the worst part of it is travel when, don't travel during the peak of the storm, if you can avoid it, be flexible, and also uh, don't travel when everybody else is. Wednesday before Thanksgiving, no. And Sunday, no. If you go Tuesday or Monday or earlier, or if you can't, if you can't avoid it middle of the night, it's tough on the parents. But man, it's so much easier when those kids to, to get crazy. Oh, I did something I wanted to add quickly. With the iPad or an iPhone, take the blue light out. Mm. I change the light settings because when kids have too much blue light, they get really like uh, mm -hmm. hyper, mm -hmm. and I think it drains them. So when you take the iPad away from them, they're like. <laughs> yeah. So I put in more red light yeah. because blue light is overly stimulating. Mm -hmm. So if they're gonna have, yeah, totally. If they're gonna have it for more than an hour to hour and a half, you might want to change your settings. Okay, so here's the final one, and then we'll wrap things up. Uh, the, the final thing is just sort of like a big broad question because you know. It's it's Christmas, it's the holidays, it's it's whatever you celebrate this time of year that's important to you, and you te gifts tend to be involved with this. So I'm curious from you how you tend to avoid because every single ad, oh let's go get a car this year, let's go get this, let's go get that, and it starts weighing on you even with with your spouse. So how do you avoid going over the cliff of spending too much or just kind of getting just involved in? Getting gifts, giving gifts, the right gift, and just getting all of that instead of just taking a moment to appreciate, you know, what the season can be all about. Is there anything that you guys have learned to just go over? Because we all know when we go over, and you can't go back. Um, yes, I think sticking to a budget really does help. Also, my husband has a large family, so a few years back, it was just taking a toll on everyone buying a gift for every single person. Mm -hmm. So now we just focus on the kids, mm -hmm. a gift or two for the kids, and then we do a secret Santa. So we're only buying one present for, you know, but we get all get together, mm -hmm. Christmas Day, and we do our gift exchange, it's still fun, we eat, you know, play games, you know, more about the experience of being with the family, mm -hmm. and not so much about buying for every single person. Okay. All right, DJ? Yeah. Uh, we kind of agree. We also do the Secret Santa because we have a big family. Um, um, we also do, and even though we go over our budget, we set a budget. There is a, but we won't use credit cards. We're just like, okay, this is how much cash we're going to spend, this is how much money, and we're, we may go to the very tip of that cash and be mad afterwards, but we don't go past that, you know, because it's very easy to just say, we're going to swipe, 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 and then, um, and then we But now you just hold it up, and it's yeah, like, right, right, there's right, nothing right, physical, true. it's just like, That's magically true. the money just disappears. <laughs> And, um, and we're, we're also um, very involved with our church, and we just try and, um, you know, remember the real meaning of Christmas, which is about Jesus, and, you know, once we have to kind of dial back to that, because that's really what it's about for us, so that helps a lot. Okay, um, and just so we're not neglecting anyone, that we do have holiday uh, mm -hmm. gifts as well. Not everyone will celebrate Christmas, mm -hmm. but a lot of people will also be having things with family and friends. Um, I'm spouse-less. Uh, but when I uh, was in a relationship, I actually think quirky, funny gifts are better for significant others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I will either make you something that you really like, or it's typically like a white elephant gift. It's going to be something really quirky that when you open it, you're going to be like, really? Because um, I think there's more fun. Uh, and most times we kind of have what we want in it. Yeah. This is so good. I literally use a show to, to enrich my life. I, learn a lot from you. Uh, I just add one final thing. I think. Uh, we have a big family, so we do. We draw names out of a hat. You get one person, one gift on a theme under a certain amount of money. Everyone usually goes a couple bucks over or combines things, but it it ends up working out because one gift for every adult kid, all that tends to be too much. But and some people in the comments um, have done the same thing, so it's nice to know I'm not alone on this. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so that's three moms and a dad. I understand this looks and feels a little bit different. We'll have some of those fancy things back maybe next week. But I want to I thank 
Deidre and Ashley and of course Tracy Humphrey for being here and taking part of this and enjoy the holidays. These are magic times. Don't spend too much money. <laughs>